Uh, we're going to talk about royalty and testing today. Uh, can everybody hear me okay? I'm assuming so because I have a mic on and all that kind of stuff. But I'm a loudmouth anyways, fat, lazy loudmouth. So uh, who am I? Before I get started, I got to tell you a couple things about me. And there's a main reason for it, other than the fact that I get to put pictures of my kids up and cool Star Wars costumes. Um, it's very important to understand my mindset as you listen to what I talk about. Um, I am a security nerd. I founded and run Secure Ideas. We're a consulting firm out of Jacksonville, Florida. We are 16 people now, which blows my mind. We're not huge, but it's bigger than I ever thought we'd be because it was an accident. Uh, there was never a plan to start a business. I just had people ask me if I could do some work, and I could, and so I did. And then next thing I know, I have 16 employees, and I'm responsible for their mortgages, which is kind of scary, right? Uh, so I've been doing that for a while. I've been involved in IT as a developer and as an admin for about 25, 26 years now. I am a nerd. Um, if you don't know it now, you will know it by the end of the talk. Um, basically, uh, I'm so nerdy that the guy that used to take my lunch money all the way through school still takes my lunch money uh, quite often. But man, he makes a damn good Subway sandwich. So <laughs> I am also an IONS faculty member. We're a decision support company. Think Gartner, but better. And uh, of course, I'm biased, right? Uh, so I've been an IONS faculty member for about five years now. Uh, and I do speaking and teaching and all that kind of stuff. I wrote the web pen testing and mobile security curriculum for SANS Institute. Teach, I've taught everywhere from Virginia Tech to Princeton to UF, which is kind of funny because I barely made it out of high school, right? Uh, which, when, uh, when Princeton came and said, hey, can you teach a class? I'm like, yeah, of course, Princeton, that's kind of cool, right? Like, oh, man, Ivy League. I don't really know what Ivy League means, but hell, I'll go. Uh, right, so we started doing the contract negotiation, and that's when they came back and they said, hey, Kevin, where did you get your PhD? And I said, well, I can write those three letters, but <laughs> I mean, do you want me to write it on a piece of paper? I don't, I don't know. I don't have a PhD. Oh, well, what about your master's? I don't have a master's. Let's be clear. I don't have a bachelor's or an AA either. Uh, they had to get a special exception <laughs> to let me come teach a class, which I thought was absolutely hilarious, right, uh, which is why I tell you now. I, I'm also, I run a whole bunch of open source projects. Uh, here's my recommendation. If you've ever thought to yourself, man, I should run an open source project, what you should do is go stand in the middle of a highway and let four cars hit you, <laughs> and then go do something else. Um, it's horrible. I mean, people have literally called my house and cursed and threatened my wife because I didn't implement a feature they wanted. Here's a hint. Don't ever call the house and threaten the wife of a guy whose entire job is to break into companies and steal shit, okay? Just a recommendation, <laughs> especially not if you use your caller ID and I know your name. Uh, just, just saying, right? Uh, so I do a lot of different things, but like I said, my viewpoint is slightly different than other people's. Uh, I, my entire job, day in, day out, when I'm not speaking and teaching, I am breaking into companies and stealing stuff. I tell people all the time that I've got the best job in the world. I get to come in, tell you your baby is ugly, and you suck, and go home. It's awesome, <laughs> right? Now, that's not really what I do. I test stuff, I evaluate stuff, I help understand risk, and I give recommendations on how to fix it. One of the main things that I think differentiates secure ideas from other companies is the fact that we don't hire security people. We hire developers and admins. Because I'm a very firm believer, and this may not be something you're used to hearing, but I'm a very firm believer that if I can't give you real world actionable recommendations, then I am useless. And for too long as an admin and as a developer, I would get reports from pen tests and security people that sucked, right? Oh, well, you can't do that. I have to do that. That's how the language works. Right? No, 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 a security guy says. Yeah, security guy, blow it out your rear. Um, by the way, this talk will be PG-13. I should have said that at the beginning. Right? Uh, so we try very hard to do this. I'd like to tell people that I am an international speaker because I spoke in uh, Australia once and Canada like four times. I'm kind of like the Jacksonville International Airport. It has one flight to the Bahamas a week, so it's an international airport. 
I made that joke at a conference in Jacksonville, and you would have thought that I had peed in this guy's Wheaties. He was so mad. He was like, we are too, an like in the middle of the talk, he's like, we are too, an international airport. I'm like, really? Yes, we are. I said, great, answer one question, and I'll agree. Where is customs? And the right answer is not Atlanta, <laughs> right? So uh, another thing about me uh, is that I'm full of tangents. I'm full of lots of things, my eyes are brown. I will try to make the tangents somewhat relevant. I don't promise that, but I'll try. So I'm all over the place. The other thing is I have a sense of humor. Please note, because I believe in honesty and warning you so you have time to leave, uh, I did not say a good sense of humor. Uh, my current favorite joke, and it's been my current favorite joke for a while, is do you guys know why Walmart wasn't hacked? They're not a target. So <laughs> the best part about that joke is I got to introduce the CISO of Walmart, and I told that joke in his introduction. He wouldn't shake my hand. <laughs> like, I'm like, hey, and he went, and walked around me. And I'm thinking to myself, I said you weren't an act. You got the good end of that joke, right? I was at another conference, and the CIO of Target was there. I'm sorry, the CSO of Target was there. And the conference would not let me introduce her. I'm like, no, please. And they're like, are you going to tell your joke? I'm like, of course I'm going to tell my joke. That's the entire time I want, reason I want to introduce her. They wouldn't let me do it. Um, the other thing I want to point out, and it's because I get a kick out of it, right? Uh, I'm very proud of this. My wife says it's the nerdiest thing I've ever done. I am a very proud member of the 501st. For the people who don't know, the 501st is a costuming charity group. We have 10,000 members worldwide. Last year, I believe we raised $11 million for charity. Uh, we dress up in Star Wars costumes, and then, you know, I like to say realistic Star Wars costumes. What I mean is screen accurate, because <laughs> uh, there's nothing realistic about Star Wars, no matter how much we want it to be. But, uh, and we go and raise money for charity. For example, the picture in the middle there was a five-hour Braille event where they had 300 blind kids, and they brought us in. That's me in my Vader costume. Uh, they brought us in and let the kids feel the characters. It was the most amazing thing other than my kids that I have ever done, right? Uh, I, it's a good thing I have a helmet on because I cried, right? It, it is just amazing. So I'm, I'm pretty proud of that. I've been a member for a few years now. So let's get started on this, and, and let's be very blunt. I've got lots of slides, not true, I have 14. We've got some time, and we're gonna talk about a lot of things. The slides are just there to try to keep me on target, okay? Um, but the reality is, security is important. And I know I can say that, because I'm a security consultant, so it helps my business, right, to say, ha ha, we're, security's important, everybody should pay attention to it. But the reality is, it is important. We have too many problems today. And I'm not going to sit here, okay, I am going to sit here and give you scary stories, right? Because the reality is what I do for a living is scary. But what I hope is that you guys leave here with an idea of how you can improve it. And I want to be very clear that the idea on how to improve it does not require you to hire Kevin. This isn't a sales pitch. Yes, I'm a consultant. Yes, I'm a greedy capitalist. I joke around and say that my business goal is to be protested by the Occupy movement, right? If you have Occupy Elderberry Court, I'm a success. Whole bunch of pub tents in my cul-de-sac, right? That'd be awesome. Smelly, but awesome, right? I would turn a hose on them. I know it. That's the type of person I am. I'm just mean, right? I'm officially an asshole, according to court records. Uh, I do expert witness work, and I had the defense attorney call me an asshole during my deposition. It takes quite a bit to get a defense attorney to call you an asshole in a recorded deposition. Make it better, when I went to testify in court against them, right, the judge actually said to me as I got, after I got sworn in and I was walking to the stand, she goes, wait a minute, aren't you the asshole? <laughs> and I'm like, yes, ma'am, because I didn't know what else to say, right? I, <laughs> yes, Your Honor. And uh, she's like, oh, okay, so it got entered into court records that I'm an asshole. I don't know if that like, gets me a trophy or anything, but we, we think security is important because it's what we do. But we also think security is important because it is. And I'll give you a, a good reason it matters to me, and I want to be very clear. This is not a 
think of the children, because that's bullshit. Everybody always uses that thing, right? Think of the children. We need TSA because of the children, right? You all know what TSA stands for, right? Thousands standing around. Um, glad we're paying for that. But <laughs> when my oldest, Brenna, was nine, she was diagnosed with a seizure disorder and OCD, right? And that's kind of fun. A seizure disorder, that sucks, but she'll outgrow it with no long-lasting effects, which is kind of nice, right? Thank God. OCD, I have OCD, so we can handle that. I can teach her how to maintain herself with the patterns and everything else like that. And she has the benefit that her father knows what it's like. While it's different for her than for me, as it is for everybody with OCD, right? And I don't mean like, oh, I have OCD because everything's alphabetical in my cabinet. No, you're an asshole. But uh, <laughs> she was diagnosed. A couple months after she was diagnosed, Wolfson's Children's Hospital had a breach event. Now, we don't know whether the breach was that somebody broke in and stole crap or that they just lost data, right? Because they don't give you that information. I will tell you that you can Google search Brenna's social security number right now. It's on the internet with her medical records, her date of birth, her address, and every bit of information about her that the hospital had. Which means that at nine years old, my daughter got to have a conversation with me about what it meant for the rest of her life that her identity was public. She got to have the conversation that for the rest of her life, she was going to have to deal with the fact that other people were using her social security number. Why? Because security wasn't paid attention to. Because I don't care what the breach was. I really don't. I mean, I do, curiosity-wise, right? But the reality is that type of breach happens too often. That type of data and a year of credit monitoring isn't going to solve that for her. As a matter of fact, even though they paid for a year of credit monitoring, she was nine, so she wasn't allowed to sign up for it, right? So isn't that nice? That's a scam, right? And that type of problem is something I see all the time. And, and I'll give you another example, right? I'm working with a developer. We do something we call ride-along pen testing. Uh, it's because I watched too many episodes of Cops when I was a kid. And so what we do is we, we come on site, or we'll do it remotely, but on site seems to work, right? We come on site and we actually work with the developers, the IT people, the admin. As we pen test the application, we show them what we're doing. And the goal is not just to find vulnerabilities, but to show them how to test so that they don't need to hire me next week, next month, next year. Right? Because my true business goal is to put myself out of business. If I do my job right, you don't need me. So we go on site, and I'm working with this really nice developer. Notice I didn't say really smart developer, but a really nice developer right? who cared, who wanted to do the right thing. And I start browsing the website. And as I start to browse the website, I use a tool called Burp, which is an interception proxy. And it allows me to see all of the communication from my client to the server, server back to my client, right? Kind of nice. And I look at this one response that comes back down. And there is VB script in the client. This is a few years ago, right? Uh, there's VB script in the client that initiates a SQL connection to a Microsoft SQL server from the client. And in the connection string is the username some of you may recognize it, SA, and then a password, right? Not password, a password, right? It's kind of funny, even though this is years ago, you don't know who the client is, you can't use it, and they've changed the password, I don't feel comfortable telling you what it was, but it was weak, right? So I say to the user, the developer, who's sitting next to me, I'm like, oh, that's bad. And he looks at it, he goes, why? I'm like, well, look at that password. He said, yeah, that looks like a strong password. And it wasn't, but we won't get into why he thought it was, right? And he goes, that's a strong password. I'm like, ah, not really, but that's really not the issue. He's like, well, what's wrong with it? I'm like, well, you can look at the password. He's like, I did look at the password. I'm like, no, no, no. The, the answer is what's wrong with it is you can look at the password. I don't care how strong you make it. You can make it 4,000 characters that are untypable, right? Like Unicode crap, right? Well, passwords with emojis, I don't know, right? It wouldn't matter because I can highlight it, Control-C, Control-V, I'm in, woohoo! That's not even hacking. That's viewing source, right? 
That's like lower than low-hanging fruit. That's crap falling off the tree, rotting. And the developer honestly didn't understand the issue. And, and to be honest, in talking to the guy, he was a good developer, I guess. But he never thought about the idea that the user could look at the content that came down to it. Which is funny to me, because how many of you as developers use tools to view the HTML that comes down to you, right? The JavaScript console, all, like you use it as part of your daily job. Yet in his head, that was secret stuff, right? That's the type of stuff we deal with. We can talk about advanced attacks, right? APT. Just to clarify, APT is the Chinese. It's now a marketing term, <laughs> OK? There is nothing advanced about sending an email to somebody and having them click a link. Nothing. So if some company says, we had a breach, it was an advanced attack. Really, how did it happen? Joe got an email and he clicked the link. Not advanced. Trivial, right? We want to think about this, because the reality is, as we move more and more forward, security is becoming something people are actually thinking about. And when I say people are thinking about it, I mean your users. I have a customer, right, a company right now that we are about to stop using. Why? Because we've been using their service, and their service is insecure. No, we haven't pen tested it, because we don't have permission. But we can tell by using it that they haven't thought through security, right? And we've reached out to them to say, hey, this is important. And I will recognize and acknowledge the fact that I am a different type of customer, right? I'm probably not the type of customer you want if you don't pay attention to security, because I do. And we're about to fire them. Now, here's the problem when I fire a company, right? It's sharp spring. I now start to use them in my examples of my talks. And I tell them that. Hey, I told you about these security issues. I told you about the issues you have. They're a marketing CRM. So they have sensitive data. They have data about you. If any of you came to my website before this talk with the idea that, wait, we could go look at his bio and crap like that, which I don't understand, my bio is weird, right? Your data is there because they monitor that traffic and they integrate with Google Analytics and all this kind of stuff, and they know people. They send us reports. It's crazy. Like, hey, Joe from GoToConference just came to your website and spent 14 minutes looking at these pages, and here's his phone number, his email address, and the company he works for. If I thought privacy existed, it would scare the crud out of me, right? But they don't have security, so I'm firing them and making them an example, right? That's what happens when you work with secure ideas, right? And we tell people that up front. When salespeople come and talk to us, we say, hey, we'll try your product out, but just understand, we're gonna tell people what we think of it. And I always love salespeople, because they're so confident. Oh, that's awesome, we'd love you to tell people about us. No, you probably wouldn't. Microsoft found that out. I always make the comment, if a pen tester likes something, get it the hell off your network. And then I also make the comment, I love SharePoint, right? <laughs> it's awesome for pen testers. I made that comment at a conference once a few years ago and somebody tweeted it out and Microsoft started retweeting it. They had a bot that every time somebody said something like, I love my, uh, SharePoint, they would retweet it. So they retweeted, when a pen tester says they like something, get it off your network, I love SharePoint. <laughs> I think at last count they retweeted it like 200 times. It was awesome. But the reality is we have to think about security, right? See, wrong button. We have to think about what the attacks are. Right? And this is the main thing I want to talk about today. As we talk about this idea of testing, and I want to be very clear, I was a developer for years. I don't consider myself a developer anymore because I'm the boss. So we were actually having that conversation this morning. We're about to write, start writing a new piece of software, a tool that we're going to release. And uh, I'm excited because I'm going to get to write some of the code. And I was talking to Jason Gillum, uh, one, of our, one of my guys, he's like basically my right-hand man. I should say left-hand man, because I'm left-handed, but most people don't know that, so it doesn't make as much sense. <laughs> but I said to him, you know, it makes no sense for me to write this code, because I'm busy, but damn it, I'm gonna, because I miss doing it, so I'm excited. 
But when we talk about testing, right? How many of you, may I ask, how many of you are developers here? I'm assuming the majority, if not all of you, right? How many of you believe that you have enough time in your schedule to do everything you've been asked to do by your company and add in-depth comprehensive security testing to what you do? How many people believe that? Yeah, I didn't think so. How many of you people believe that you have enough resources to do everything you need to do? Yeah, I didn't think so. Right? You do. <laughs> wait, wait. I got to call you on that one. You work for yourself and feel that you have enough resources to do things? OK, I, I, as the owner of Secure Ideas, I've never felt that I had enough time to do everything I need to do. But cool, more power to you, man. Oh, OK, yeah, time and re I call time a resource. Who doesn't? <laughs> I mean, you sleep, right? Yeah, it's like. I know what sleep is. I, I've watched it on TV. But um, so I know this. My recommendation is to forget everything we talk about, about buying products like Veracode and Fortify or whatever, app scan or what have you, and running against your apps. You can if you want to. What I'd rather you do is stop thinking about security as security in and of itself. I want you to recognize the fact that security is functionality. You know, we talk about, how many people here have seen the Little Bobby Tables comic? Security people seem to pass that around like it's perfect. I, I, okay, fine, whatever, it's funny, I giggled. Hell, I giggle every time I see it. If I put a single quote in a login field on your application and I get a database error message, isn't that broken functionality? Right? Now, don't get me wrong, it's a security issue, right? As a pen tester, I giggle a little. I giggle a lot in my job, right? It's unnerving if I'm doing a ride along. <laughs> Here's a hint if I ever come out to your company and do a ride along with you, if I say, huh, that's interesting, panic. <laughs> I found out years ago that's my key. I don't know why, I don't even think about it. I just, hey, that's interesting. <laughs> Matt Carpenter, a good friend of mine, we worked together. He always said that when I said that, he stopped doing everything else just to see what crap I pulled out of my hat. And it was weird. But what I want you to do is think about these things. But as part of your daily job, just as something, right? We need to know what our threats are. But biggest question I'll ask, what are you actually worried about as a security concern? What keeps you up at night? Right? Because we can talk about random things, but I want you to actually understand what the sensitivity of your application is. Right? And I'll use an example, Coke. How many people here believe that one of the things Coke is worried about losing is their secret recipe? You do? Okay, I'll go with that. Lots of people do. Hell, if you go tour the museum in Atlanta, they show you the vault. That's where we store the recipe. Do you know that the recipe isn't even on their list of top 100 things to worry about? Do you know why? Because it's been stolen so many times. By the way, there's science. It's been reverse engineered. If you don't believe that Pepsi knows how to make Coke, then you're an idiot, right? But Pepsi's not gonna make Coke. Pepsi isn't gonna start a, a advertising campaign that says, hey guys, we know for the last 150 years, we've been telling you Pepsi's ready, better. We lied, but don't worry about it. We got this one. We got Pepsi Coke now, right? That's not going to happen. As a matter of fact, if the recipe is stolen, right, do you know what happens? They call Coke. It's happened multiple times. Like this administrative assistant stole the recipe once. Somehow she got access to it. She took it. She was mad. She was a disgruntled employee. I know that all of you are gruntled employees. She was disgruntled, right? So she called Pepsi. I, I, like, is that an option on the IVR system? Press five if you have the recipe for Coke, right? So somehow she got to somebody and she said to them, hey, I got the recipe. I'm willing to sell it to you. $150,000 or whatever, right? She asked for a lot of money. I'll sell it to you. Do you know what Pepsi did? They called Coke. 
And they're like, hey, Susan just called us. They, she said she has the recipe. Do you want us to handle it or are you going to handle it? Oh, no, don't worry about it. We got it. Right? And they went and arrested her. <laughs> they don't care. They really don't. Do you know what Coke is actually worried about, according to Coke? Do you know those freestyle machines? You know the, I go in, I push some buttons, and I get Lime Coke, the best thing in the world. Lime Coke. I'm addicted. I'll admit it, right? I'm a fat guy. Don't, don't judge. Okay, judge. They're worried about those. Because every single time you make a selection on the freestyle machine, it sends a packet of data up to an API out in the cloud for Coke to keep track of so that they know what flavors are popular in what areas. And you think, why are they worried about that? I'll tell you. Five guys. Do you guys have five guys up here? Okay. So the most expensive burger you can get at a fast food restaurant? Five guys have freestyle machines. They're a public company. right? If I could capture that data, I know that on average, for every two fill-ups, of a cup, one meal was sold, right? Because if you guys have been to Five Guys, you've done it, right? You walk up, you buy your meal, they hand you their cup. They go, sit over there, we'll call your number. You go, you fill up your cup, you drink it. It's a lime Coke, so you slurp that thing down fast. You finish your meal, and you go fill it up with the lime Coke goodness one more time to take it with you. Because for some reason, Coke is stupid, and it doesn't sell it in bottles where I could buy it. Right? So my only source is a freestyle machine. So I now know two fill-ups, one meal. I also know that the average cost of a meal at Five Guys is $87.36. I might be exaggerating. So if I can capture that data, if I get access to that API and can pull the data, if I get access to that traffic and can deal with it, I know the sales of Five Guys. I can short or push or long or whatever the heck the investment terms are, right? Don't take investment advice from me. Not only that, but according to Coke, their contracts with those companies, Coke takes entire liability for any capture of that data. That's how they got the machines in place. They were willing to accept liability for that. That's why that API, which I'll be blunt, if I had been the developer of that API, all it accepts is Lime Coke and a location. That's it. Who the heck would think that was sensitive, right? Who would think that's something I got to worry about? That's what I mean about understanding risk, understanding your threat. You have to understand what's going on because as we move forward, everything is accelerating. I love it, right? Agile development. We push more apps today than we pushed last week, than we pushed last year. I was just in a panel uh, last week, and somebody quoted a stat that I had not heard, and I went and researched it, and supposedly it's true. 92% of the data that exists today was generated in the last five years. 92% of the data generated that exists was generated in the last five years. That is asinine. That's mind-boggling, right? That data is sensitive. That data has to be protected. And we are pushing more and more applications to handle that data. And as we look at agile development, which I think is funny, don't get me wrong, right? And I say this with love. But lots, the stereotypical image of a developer is a fat, lazy neckbeard, right? And we called it agile. Let's be clear, agile does not describe this body at all. So I think it's sarcasm. But we see things like Netflix, right, who proudly announces that they deploy code 47,000 times an hour to production. I'm exaggerating slightly, right? And I know that they use this as like, a mark. look how good we are. We can deploy and deploy and deploy. And I read that as our code sucks so bad, we have to deploy this many times a day which I know is not what they mean, <laughs> right? But when we look at that, how are we supposed to test that? How are we supposed to handle looking at all of those applications, right? The only way to do it is for you guys to pay attention 
And in my mind, we need to combine red and blue, hence the term purple teaming, hence royal testing. I can't do it all. You can't afford to have me do it all. Don't get me wrong, bless you. Don't get me wrong, if you have unlimited budget, call Andrew, he'll set up an SOW. <laughs> but if you have unlimited budget, what the hell are you doing here? There are Bahama Islands you could buy and just hang out at. You could fly us all there for this conference on your dime if you had an unlimited budget, right? I think of these things. But you can't have me test your app, so you have to do it, right? You have to understand. And one of the ways I say to do this is first, know what you need to look for. Understand the flaws. How many people here know about the OWASP top 10? Good. It bothers me a little bit that not everybody in the room raised their hand. I don't mean that meanly. OWASP is the Open Web Application Security Project. It is a free resource. By the way, if you deal with PCI in any way, if your app is in any way related to a PCI network, you are required to know what the OWASP top 10 is, period. If you don't know what the OWASP top 10 is, your company can lose the ability to accept credit cards. That would suck for you. But I know, you don't accept credit cards, or your app doesn't, right? Have you ever heard of the Federal Trade Commission? Have you looked at the Federal Trade Commission versus Wyndham Worldwide, the hotel chain? Wyndham was hacked three times, that they'll acknowledge. <laughs> Sorry, did I say that out loud? <laughs> The Federal Trade Commission went after them and said, you suck. You did bad. And you affected American citizens. And we're responsible for protecting the consumer. So they sued Wyndham. By the way, they won. And I'm not going to argue the legitimacy of the case or anything else like that, but I will tell you that what came out of that case was the Federal Trade Commission says, we are going to hold every company that deals with American consumers to a standard. And Wyndham came back and said, whoa, hippie, you haven't given us a standard. And the Federal Trade Commission said something that I thought was smart. And <laughs> let's be clear, I just said government and smart in the same sentence, and I wasn't being sarcastic. They said, we aren't agile enough to generate that standard. You're right, we didn't generate one. We're going to hold you to industry standards. And the industry standard they picked was PCI. They said that they are going to hold organizations up against PCI. So if you're breached and the Federal Trade Commission starts to look at it, they're going to ask you how you, how you match PCI requirements. And one of them is knowing OWASP, right? One of them is understanding the attacks. Because if you don't understand the attacks, how can you possibly understand how to fix them? If I say to you, putting a single quote in a field, right, Everybody in this room is going to go, yeah, 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 I know what that does. You're immediately going to think SQL injection. I know that. I'm not even going to ask you to raise hands. Why? Because if you didn't raise your hands, you'd feel bad. We've known about SQL injection for 20 plus years. That's not an exaggeration. 20 plus years ago, we found out about SQL injection. 20 plus years ago, we found the solution to SQL injection. Don't have SQL databases. No, no, that's not it. Oh. Parameterized queries. Parameterized queries are easy. They're trivial. They're trivial to implement. Every major language supports them. They require no significant resources beyond dynamic queries. As a matter of fact, in some cases, they require less resources than dynamic SQL. And they're easy to implement. Yet last week, I found SQL injection in an app that was built this damn year. If you're a developer writing SQL injection, and I want to be clear, I was a developer writing SQL injection, so I'm talking about me too, you fail. And I'm not standing up here saying, oh, you idiot developer, but in that case, I'm going to be hard pressed not to call you an idiot developer. Because we've known about it for 20 years. And I don't buy the, oh, but it's so hard, I'm busy. Yeah, you are. But like I said, parameterized queries are easier to build than dynamic SQL. I just made your job better. Your job easier to do. Do it. 
Understand the attacks. Understand what I do. Understand the professionally evil mindset that I have when I look at your app. That's all I'm asking you to do. I'm not asking you to do hardcore pen testing. I'm asking you to think about what an attack could do. Understand them. And then on top of that, understand context. Understand where the attack runs. We already said PCI was a good thing, right? And I want to be very clear. PCI is a very low bar, right? It's like you must be this tall to ride the internet. That's what PCI is, right? For the longest time, PCI DSS did not consider cross-site scripting a serious issue, which I think is hilarious. No, no, no. You can run arbitrary code in the browser. That can't be bad. No. I actually said, I, I taught a class, and I made a joke about that, like how stupid the PCI guys were for not thinking cross-site scripting. And I had a dude about where he's sitting yell at me, because he happened to be on the board who made that decision. And his answer was, no, 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 cross-site scripting is not that big a deal. It's a client-side issue. It's not a server-side issue. I'm like, really? Do you own a store? If I stand right outside your storefront and every single person that comes in, I kick them wah, as hard as I can in the shin, right? And I'm wearing a shirt that's got your name on it. Are you going to come out and say to me, what the hell are you doing? Stop kicking my customers. Do you think it would be a valid answer for me to say, dude, client-side issue, not your problem? Right? That's cross-site scripting. You are kicking your users in the shin every single time you're vulnerable to it. We need to think about context. We need to think about where this stuff runs. Where does the application run? Right? Uh, an example of that. How many people here have ever written a calendar app? Right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that like, every developer writes a calendar app at some point in their life. And then they realize it's a really dumb thing to write, and they go on to something else. It's like crypto. Don't write your own crypto. You're not that smart. Unless your initials are one of the RSA initials, <laughs> go away. Right? I'm not that smart either, just to be clear. <laughs> My initials are K and J, not in those three. But people write calendar apps. And I, I have people say to me all the time, we have a public calendar. And I say, yeah, I found SQL injection in that calendar app. Oh, that's not a big deal. None of this data in that calendar app is sensitive. So it's OK that the user could write, execute arbitrary queries against the database. You, you said that with a straight face. You didn't even giggle when you said it. I think you mean it. When we talk about context, right? If I said to you, I found cross-site, I'm sorry, geez, I switched the vulnerability. I found SQL injection in your calendar app compared to I found SQL injection in your calendar app, and I can access any data on the database, and that database also coexists with your PeopleSoft database. Context. The first one, I know is bad. Business might not. Second one, people are panicking. Right? You have to understand that context. You have to understand where things are so that you can test. Because the reality is, the way that you test is you look 99%, and I'm not making up that number, I probably am, of testing is just having awareness of the problems that exist. So as you build the system, as you build your unit tests, as you do that, you can solve the problem. Something I'll throw out here. Every single one of you should go out to FuzzDB tonight. FuzzDB is an open source project that has attack payloads. That's it. And my recommendation is go out there and take some of those attack payloads and put them in your unit tests, right? You have automated unit tests, right? Of course you do. Let's say you have a login field. This is just a simple example. I'm assuming that you test for valid username, valid password, valid username, invalid password, invalid username, and whatever password. Right? Those are usually the three common unit tests. Now put a payload for cross-site scripting, a payload for command injection, a payload for XSE, a payload for LDAP. Right? Pick five or ten payloads that make sense, context, in a login field. Right? Add them to your unit test. It takes nothing to write that. It's just a payload. And all you have to do is look for an odd response. That's it. 
I don't even care if you understand what XFC is. I don't care if you understand what LDAP injection is yet. I will. But to begin with, if all you do is add to your unit tests a set of payloads that run, and if those payloads fail, or if those payloads have a problem, call your security person. Whether that's somebody on the development team that knows security or whether it's an actual security team, I don't care. But do that, and you'll start understanding. I thought I had one more panel. <laughs> that was close. I've never fallen off a stage. Today might be the first time. We'll see, right? But that'll get you started. That's the red. But what about blue? Let me ask a question. Pretty much everybody in the room raised their hand as developers, right? How many of you, when you think <coughs> about your app, do you think about defending it? And I don't mean writing code so it prevents attacks. I mean responding to an incident. Good. <laughs> Got a couple hands. That's awesome. When you write your app, because I'll tell you, as a person who has done IR, way too much IR. There's some images you can't unsee. That's why I don't do it anymore. But when you have an app, I can't tell you the number of times I go in. Here's an example. How many people here log failed login attempts to your app? Right? Yeah. How many of you log successful logins? I want to point out a fewer hands. Let me ask you a question. I'll give you an example. Which is worse, a million failed login attempts against an administrative account or a million failed login attempts against an administrative account and one successful one? Which is worse? Second one, of course. All of you that didn't raise your hand about logging successful logins, you'd never know. You'd know that you had a million failed logins. I'm going to say, yeah, but did they get in? And you're going to be like, shit, I don't know. <laughs> That's not a good answer when your boss is like, ah, we got hacked. Because in most states that have breached notification laws, they have a clause in there that says, if you can't prove you weren't breached, assume you were. Do you want to do notification of all your users because you didn't log whether the login was successful or not? That would suck. Because it's made even worse, right? Because not only are you going to have to tell all your users, hey, we were screwed. We need to get dinner first. But you're going to have to tell them you don't know what they did. <laughs> we may have been screwed. That sucks, right? That's what we say. Think about blue. Think about how you do it. How many of you actually review your logs? How many work at companies where somebody reviews your logs? Now, I'll, I'll point at you just because you're close enough, OK? So sorry. You say somebody reviews your logs for your app, right? Awesome. Glad to hear it. Did that person ever come and talk to you about what the app does? At the beginning, as you do updates and everything, do they talk to you? No, of course not, right? They're busy. We see this all the time. And I'm actually happy to hear that they talk to you in the beginning. Most times, the security people don't ever talk to the developers. They start monitoring applications, and they have no idea what that app does. They've never talked to the developer. I was an admin. I was, ran the web share servers for uh, Blue Cross. And uh, when I was there, we had an app that died one night. And I got the page, and yes, page, I'm old, right? And I called in, di you know, di called in. I VPNed in, I'm sorry. OK, I dialed in. <laughs> I, ugh, the noise of a modem. But I told you I'm old. And I got the logs. And I'll admit, I was one of those guys that I deployed something, had no idea what the app did, had no idea what the logs meant. And I got a log message that said, error code 42. And it really was. I thought, not a hitchhiker's reference. It really was error code 42. And so I called the developers. And I'm like, hey, I got an error code 42 in production and blah, 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 this symptoms, blah, 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 this is what's going on. And the developer's like, oh, OK, do this, 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 and this, and it'll restart. And the problem will go away. We'll talk about it in the morning. I'm like, great, no problem. I did it, 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 it's back up and right. Woohoo, we're good to go. I can go back to sleep. Right? Which is an on call person is my goal going back to sleep. Right? 
That was awesome. So I put notes in, right? Like if this happens, you get an error code 42, do this, 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 it'll fix it. Don't bother the developers, just fix it. Jump ahead a week, literally a week. I get it's like 3 o'clock in the morning. Wait, uh, yeah. I dial in. I go look at the logs, error code 42. I'm like, I got this one. I know this one. Do, 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 do. Shit. It didn't fix anything. So I tried it again, because that always works, right? It's like banging the side of the TV. Has banging the side of a modern TV ever helped? But we still do it. <laughs> How many of you blow into your PS4? But uh, <laughs> so I blew into my retro pie last night. And, uh, OK, I didn't really, but it's fun to say. The retro pie is also total tangent. <laughs> it didn't fix it. So I called the developer. I got the same exact guy on the phone. I'm like, hey, dude. I say dude way too often for somebody who doesn't surf. I'm like, dude, I tried the steps, you know, 42, and then he's like, oh, you got an error code 42? I'm like, yeah. He goes, do this, this, and that. So I did. It fixed it. I said, did you change the app? He's like, no, 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 that's a different error. I'm like, they both say error code 42. And he goes, yeah, 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 but that one has a capital E on the error. So it's like, error code. I, like, I, what the hell? Right? Like, you have the exact same error code, but considering the capitalization of the first letter, are you on drugs? And that, because he had never thought about it, but in his mind, he knew, right? Like, it, but he had never considered how the logging would work when we were dealing with an incident. And in that case, that incident, that's an event, right? It's not a security thing. We were just having an availability problem, which is a security thing, right? But he never thought about it. Do you know how your logs relate to the firewall logs? One of the fun things to do, seriously, do this next week when you get back to your office. Call the security team, right? Or the network team and say, hey, I I got something going on in my logs I want to track back. Can we get the source IP and all of the relevant logs from the network infrastructure and the server infrastructure related to this log stamp in my, like this timestamp in my logs? And see them scramble. See if they can do it. Can you trace from the internet all the way in and all the way back out a transaction across the board? And I will tell you, a hundred percent of the customers I've worked with can't when I start working with them. And that's a problem, right? Because when we talk about application infrastructure and we talk about network infrastructure, we talk about that kind of stuff, we don't think about what all that means, right? Which is bringing us to purple. And this is something, and I know we've not gotten into technical hardcore details of do this testing and this testing and this testing. We can't, because this testing and this testing and this testing is different for you than it is for you, which is different for you, right? What I want, what I threw out the FuzzDB, I do think that works for everybody, but beyond FuzzDB, it depends on the app, it depends on how you deploy it. So here's something I recommend. How many of you have pen tests or security assessments done of your app? And I don't mean that you have a third party do it necessarily, right? If you do, that's great, right? If you don't, that's fine too. But you have somebody do testing of your network, of your apps, I meant, I'm sorry, right? Work with them. There is, n there is few things I like better than when I come in to do a pen test, then I have a developer say to me, hey, do you mind if I talk to you about this? Seriously. And that's not just me. Most security people want to talk to people responsible for building the systems, right? Think about it. Work with them. I mentioned the ride-alongs. And I want to be clear, I call them ride-alongs. Many security consulting firms do them. Most security teams will let you do them, if you have an internal security team, right? They may not call it a ride-along, though, OK? But work with me. Let me show you. Talk to me. If you say to me, hey, we just deployed a new version of the app, and this is something we changed here, and I'm a little worried about how it's working, could you focus some on it? I will. I'll talk to you about it, right? And while I'm doing my pen test, ask me what I'm doing and see if you could detect it. 
actually work it like an incident. Now, don't get to the point where you call the FBI because people kicking in my front door is never fun. I've only ever been shot at twice, which is not fun. <laughs> if you've never been shot at, I don't recommend it. Hey, well, you know, according to the news, I can walk outside, but it's funny. I, I wasn't shot at last night or today. I, I'm disappointed in you, Chicago. And, um, <laughs> So wrong. So every, every once in a while I realize as things come out of my mouth that I probably shouldn't have said that, but oh well. And, uh, but mimic an incident. Go pull the people in to say, hey, we have a pen tester. And if I come to you and I say, look, I found this. I found this flaw. Great. Go to your admin. Did you detect that? Go to your security people. Did you detect that? Can we see what's going on? Right? and work it like an incident so you know that your application not only is robustly protected against my attack, but if somebody performs the attack, you can detect it and respond to it before it's a problem. Because I'll give you an example of this working. You guys know Zappos? The shoe company bought by Amazon? You know they were breached, right? You know the first time they were breached? A developer and an admin stopped the egress of data. One of the Oracle admins, who was also one of their developers, saw a query coming from an odd source on their network requesting data that it didn't, normally wasn't requested. And they killed the transaction before it finished running. As a security person, that is beautiful. It really is. Because what it told me was that that developer, that admin, knew enough about their system to know what was normal and what wasn't. How many of you know what's normal in your app? Stop it. You raise your hand on everything good. <laughs> By the way, he's the next speaker, so he should. <laughs> but if you don't know what's normal, how do you know what's abnormal, right? How do you know the attacks I'm doing? Not only did it tell me that, but it also told me that Zappos has a culture where the developers and admins and I hate the word empowered, I really do, because it's such a weird, I feel like people should wear capes when they're empowered, but I watched Incredibles, I know, no capes. But they knew that if they killed that transaction in the middle of the day in production, and it turned out to be an important transaction, they weren't going to lose their job, because they were doing it for a good reason, that the company recognized the need for that level of monitoring recognize the need for that level of response. That's awesome. I don't know another word for it. It's awesome. That's where we should all get to. So I'm going to wrap up now because it's the end of my time. And I'm going to say, please, a couple things. Like I said, my job is to put myself out of business. We do lots of training. We do developer training. We do all this kind of stuff. And the reason I mention this is I don't want to do this as an ad, but I don't know any other way to talk about it. If you know anybody who is a veteran, active duty military, or first responder, our for training is free for them. All they have to do is reach out to me or the company and say, I'd like access to your free training. I'm a vet or I'm a first responder or whatever, and we will give them the coupon code to use to get access to our recorded training for free. So if you are or you know anyone who is, please let them know. It's very important to me that we do that, right? I also want to say, that I'm gonna finish up right now, and then I'm gonna leave. I gotta get back, right? I got work to do, my boss is a jerk. But I wanna be available for questions, and I mean that truly. If as you're working through something, as you're testing, as you're thinking about security, please feel free to reach out to me. Email me, call me, twitter -y me, I don't know, right? Whatever it takes, get in touch with me. If you need me to sign a non-disclosure agreement so you can show me your problem, I'll do that. Right? And that's a free offer. That's not a, hey, call and ask me questions, you're gonna get an invoice. Now, if you call and ask me and say, hey, could you test this? Then we gotta talk about an SOW and all that kind of stuff, right? But if all you wanna know is, hey, what's this mean? Or hey, I'm looking into that OWASP thing you told me about, and I don't understand this attack. Done, let's talk about it, right? If you're starting to implement testing in your system of security, call me and talk to me, I'll give you some recommendations. One recommendation, don't buy check marks. Checkmarks is the worst software you could possibly buy. It's got horrible support, and the company needs to be destroyed. Them in silence. 
Just my opinion. And I've told both companies I'm doing that in all my talks. <laughs> They're not happy about it. Eh, sue me. But <laughs> if you have any questions, please reach out to me, okay? I think that's it, right? Thank you very much, everybody. Enjoy the rest of the show.